Hey guys, how are we doing today? Uh, today we've got the modern budget for Dredge. Now Dredge was actually my second, it was really my real, my first real modern deck because I kind of built a budget deck with my little brother and we shared it, but my first actual modern deck was Dredge and so this was a lot of fun to try to rebuild. Um, but we're going to be trying to do this because I've been telling you guys in the sideboard about all that graveyard hate. And this is one of the decks that you actually need it against. So, uh, to understand Dredge the deck, you have to understand Dredge the ability. Which says, if you would draw a card, instead you may put exactly four cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand. Otherwise, draw a card. So... Whenever I would draw a card, I can choose either draw that card normally or pick a card in my graveyard. I can't do multiple, just one card in my graveyard to put it to my hand. And then it'll say dredge X, where X is a number. And then I mill that many cards off of my deck. So, for example, Gulgari Thug says dredge 4. If it's in my graveyard at the beginning of my turn and I go to draw, but instead I say, okay, I dredge 4 with Gulgari Thug, Golgari Thug is essentially my draw for the turn. It goes to my hand, and I mill four cards into my, my into my graveyard. Now, the cards that you're getting back with Dredge aren't necessarily super good. They just have a high Dredge number so that you can keep filling up your graveyard. And so we have Golgari Thug, which says, when it's put into the graveyard from play, put target creature in your graveyard on top of your library. And that's kind of a way to, uh, it's kind of a way, like, for example, if you have Narc Amoeba, which says, uh, when Narc Amoeba is put in your graveyard from your library, you may put it on the battlefield. What you can do is you can play Golgari Thug, put Narc Amoeba on top of your deck, if it's in your graveyard, and then the next turn you dredge it away and putting it, putting it directly onto the battlefield. Uh, a lot of the time you're like, oh, but there's nothing in my graveyard I want to put on there, but Narc Amoeba is one of those cards. Um, another important note about Dredge itself, if I have zero cards in my deck, or if I have three cards in my deck and I Dredge four, I'm not actually able to Dredge four. It says exactly four cards. Anyway, um, moving on, Narc Amoeba, if you're milling yourself a lot, then it's going to be entering the battlefield. Um, I do also have Stinkweed Imp, which is a 3-drop that has, uh, Death Touch, and it's a 1-2 flyer with Dredge 5. Now, that's the highest Dredge in our deck. Uh, next card is a 2 of Life from the Loam. Um, I would love to see this as more in this deck. It's just, it's the most expensive card in the deck. Um, but it says return up to t up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. It's a way to, uh, it has a different synergy with the deck. Um, but really it's dredge three and you can cast it to put it into your graveyard directly where the other dredge cards in your deck are creatures. So they go to the battlefield. So you might not direct, you might not be able to dredge immediately if you cast the creatures, but if you, if you cast Life from the Loam and target nothing in your graveyard, it still just goes to your graveyard and you have Dredge 3 for the next time you draw. Now, um, ways we can pitch our cards. Because we have, we have those Dredge cards, but we have no way to put them into our graveyard. Well, unless we play them and sack them. So, we're going to go through those. Uh, one of them is Merchant of the Veil, vale, which has Haggle, which is a one-drop instant that says you may discard a card if you do draw a card. So let's say turn one, I discard a Stinkweed Imp, and I draw a card. I can instead choose to Dredge on the very first turn, which is amazing. Um, so I can have five cards in my graveyard on turn one. Um, and you'll see that we do have profits off of milling ourselves. Um, the next way to discard stuff in our hand is Ox of Agonis, but usually Ox of Agonis is something we're going to play later in the game. 
but it does say discard your hand, then draw three cards. So if you keep dredging and you have a bunch of dredge cards in your hand, but you don't want to like actually cast them, you'll eventually mill an ox, and then just you can discard your hand, and then you draw three cards. Which are you actually going to draw three cards, or are you going to possibly dredge up to fifteen cards of your deck? Um, next way to discard stuff is cathartic reunion. As an additional cost to cast a spell, discard two cards, draw three cards. That is awesome in this deck. Um, so it's it's one of the reasons why you don't just keep playing lands um, when you keep drawing them. You just want to keep it up so that if you top deck this, you can discard your lands. Uh, or possibly your dredge cards. Um, next card is not an actual mill card. Not an actual, no, not an actual discard card, but it is a mill card. So it enters with three charge counters on it, and you can tap it to remove a charge counter. Target player mills two. So if you tap it to target yourself, then you're going to mill two cards and possibly be able to dredge. Um, this is just a small little value engine. You get one mana, six cards, um, and it's just a way to fill your graveyard. Uh, for one mana. Next up, we're going to be talking about um, payoffs from the graveyard. Because you're like, why would I mill myself? Like, if I mill myself out, I lose. Well, there are profits to it. For example, Ox of Agonis can enter as a 5-3 if you exile 8 other cards in your graveyard. But there are other ways to get 5-3s. Um, but... Some of the profits are Narc Amoeba. If it would be milled from your deck, then it goes to your battlefield instead. Um, Prized Amalgam. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from a graveyard, return Prized Amalgam from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of the next end step. Now with Narc Amoeba, it doesn't actually say instead. I just said it. So it's not a replacement effect. So it goes to the graveyard, then it comes back. Which means that if you mill this along with the prize amalgam, you will be able to get the prize amalgam on turn, on that turn at the end of the turn. So let's say turn one, I use um, where is it? I use haggle, discard Sinkweed imp to uh, draw a card. Instead of drawing a card, I mill five cards. I dredge five cards, and I dredge four prize amalgams and one narc amoeba. Narcomima enters the battlefield, and at the end of my turn, all four prize amalgams enter the battlefield tapped under my control. Now, the likelihood of that happening is not very high, but it's still a possibility, and it's still like how that card would work. Um, next up is Silver Smoke Ghoul. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, return it from the from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. It's just an extra way to return itself to the battlefield. There are ways to actually gain life in this deck, but um, it's just in there as a budget version of Bloodgast, and I really like this card. You can sacrifice it to draw a card, possibly dredging even more. Um, and it's a 3-1. Uh, next up is Conflagrate. Conflagrate deals X damage divided as you control, divided as you choose among any target permanents. Flashback, red, red, discard X cards. Now, this is where it combos nicely, synergizes nicely with Life from the Loam. So you have Conflagrate in your graveyard, or you hard cast it, but you have it in your graveyard. And then you use Life from the Loam to put, car put lands from your graveyard into your hand. Um, which is part of the reason why we have Evolving Wilds. This deck is fairly reliant on fetch lands, which is why I tried to ease away from the Life of the Loam synergy and more towards the creature-based synergy. But, um, you can return lands from your graveyard, like Evolving Wilds, and then you can... What you can do with that is you can just discard them all to deal X damage to any target, possibly your opponent killing them. Um, I, as a dredge player, has, have very, like, I played a lot of dredge, 
and I very rarely actually killed my opponent with Conflagrate. You're much more often going to kill them with Prized Amalgam, Silver Smoke Ghoul, possibly even Staking Queen Dim because of the flying, and Ox of Agonis is huge. Um, the sad thing about Ox is it is still boltable. Um, but I did move away from the Life from the Loam Conflagrate synergy because it's a budget deck and because we can't run those fetch lands. Um, Creeping Chill, it's 4 mana, deal 3 to each opponent, and you gain 3 life. But also, if it would be milled, like the Narcobima, if it would be milled, you can get its effect. So if it would be milled, you can exile it, and if you do, Creeping Chill deals 3 damage to each opponent, and you gain 3. So, let's say the same scenario, Merchant of the Veil, I haggle on turn 1, discarding Stinkweed Imp, drawing... But instead of drawing, I decide to dredge, and I dredge four creeping chills. That's 12 damage on turn one. And that's how that would work. Um, but when they when you use it for the mill ability, it will get exiled. The next card is Shriekhorn. I already told you about that. Lands or Dragon Skull Summit just for fixing. Um, because uh, Rakdos are main colors. Evolving Wilds for filtering, but also for... Uh, life from the loam forest for the ability to grab life from the loam uh, you could even go to down to one forest here it's just it, you already have enough filtering three mountain and seven uh, swamps swamps the largest color in the deck you will notice we have blue cards but no blue mana because you're never going to be hard casting them sideboard blast zone for hammer time and other small decks Lightning Axe because it has discard synergy. Um, so usually if we are going against a creature based deck or have cards in our deck that just aren't good in the matchup, we'll bring these in. Nature's Claim for Artifact Enchantment Destruction. Uh, Pithing Needle for basically almost any deck once we know what it runs. Ancient Grudge for Artifact Destruction and it has Flashback. Shenanigans is a dredge card that says destroy target artifact and i have a bit of variance between the different cards because of different decks you might go against and three ley line of sanctity to help you against burn storm and other kinds of decks that try to mess up what you're doing try to mess with what you're doing and a uh, big thing it's not very very relevant in the format right now but uh cellular wreckage targets a player and if you are going to exile all the creatures on your board, the game's over. So, it's in there for other reasons, but Cell of the Wreckage gets hard stopped by Leyline and Sanctity. Anyway, uh, this is one of my... And this, I'm going to say this for like half of these decks, but it's one of my favorite decks in the archetype. And I really want to see more Dredge players. It's a really fun deck. I know there's a lot of graveyard hate out there, but you, st it, but Leyline of Sanctity also helps about against that. Um, if you have any questions on how the deck works or on card choices or anything like that, please let me know below. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up, and I will see you next time.